All right, we are back, Santa Clarita. You're listening to Gazette Radio with Doug and John. Doug is in Indiana somehow, somewhere. Hopefully having a good time with the mold. I don't know exactly what he's doing. Uh, but we have our, our national correspondent now, Robert Patrick Lewis, famous author, uh, all-around good guy, defender of the universe, right? <laughs> defender of the realm. We'll call you defender of the realm. How's that, Robert? I like the universe. I need a spaceship. There you go. All right. Hey, Robert, I, got, I, got, I, I, I was surfing the web, and... Uh, I figured I came across something that I think we could do in the air that I thought would be kind of fun to do with you. Um, it's something called the world's smallest political quiz. I took it. Oh man! Well, you're gonna take no, it again. Just take it again. You'll take it again. Yeah. All right. Now this one, this is I, I won't. I don't know too much about the group that sponsors it, so I won't go too far into that. But the idea is, it's a political quiz. Uh, it's a series of like maybe ten questions, and it's supposed to tell you where you are in the political map. Okay. So here we go. All right. Government should not censor speech, press, media, or internet. Now, Robert, your choices are agree, maybe, or disagree. Agree, 100%. Agree, 100%. I, how did I know that? All right. Military service should be voluntary. There should be no draft. Agree, 100%. Nah, that's another one. I would kind of agree with you on. There should be no laws regarding sex for consenting adults. Agree, 100%. Okay. We should repeal laws prohibiting adult possession and use of drugs. Uh, we should repeal. Yeah, agree. Agree. Wow. You took this already, right? Uh, there should be no national ID card. Uh, that I disagree with. Really? Yeah. Just because my, my background in defense and intelligence, you know, that's why terrorist training cramps pop up in places like Africa and the Middle East. It's places where they don't have any form of identification and people can essentially go off the grid. Ah, okay. And All right. So that's where I know it's a very anti-libertarian ideology, but again, I, I very much believe that, that for security, which is, at the end of the day, the, the inherent reason for even having government is securing its people and borders, I believe that's, that is, I said, it's a fundamental thing that you need to actually secure your country. Yeah, I think I, I, I understand that. Uh, I think there's better ways to go about doing it, at least to start with. Yeah. Wouldn't it make more well, sense to maybe, you know, close the borders to start with? Yeah, yeah, of course. But I mean, it, you know, that, they didn't ask about closing the borders. <laughs> they didn't. No, they didn't. But we could, we could pull out. <laughs> yeah, we could pull that one out. <laughs> we'll pull that one out. All right, all right. The next one. This one, I, I, I'm guessing I know your answers to most of these. Uh, end corporate, quote, corporate welfare. No government handouts to businesses. Yeah, correct. I'm, I'm a free market guy. Yeah, see, I, I, okay, now, as a free market guy, I have a problem with that, because the, the no government handouts to businesses, well, you want to promote free market, and if we don't sort of regulate at times, or have the ability to regulate at times, I don't know whether I trust these large corporations to let the free market be the free market. Well, you know, and so for me, kind of understanding the organization that made the test, and just understanding the tests, I've taken so many tests in my life that it's just unbelievable, and so you get to just read between the lines on a lot of tests and know what they're asking. Yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. the question. And, you know, so here I think they're talking about crony capitalism. They're talking about subsidies. They're talking about a lot of other things. Right. You know, we subsidize corn to the point where now there's ethanol in every gallon of gas, even though it requires more energy to actually make ethanol than it puts out. Right. right? So that's based on our corn, on big corn in the United States, and subsidies and lobbying and things like that, that will even be anti-productive so that these people who have a lot of lobbying dollars which is crony capitalism, exactly. and make more money. All right. All right. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. All right. Uh, next one. End government barriers to international free trade. Yeah. Go for it, baby. Globalization. Uh, that one I got an issue with, too, because I like using free trade as a negotiating tool for other aspects of national international relations. How's that? But okay. Well, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. <laughs> uh, let people control their own retirement. Privatize socialization, social security. Yeah, that's for me 100%. The government is the most inefficient and inherently stupid machine out there. So yeah. I think people, if you give them the education, and that's one of the biggest travesties in education today is we don't teach our kids a single thing about money. So people don't understand the dangers of a credit card and they don't understand the value of saving a little bit at a time over time. In finance, there's two pillars of wisdom in finance. You have time and you have money. If you don't have a lot of money, but you have a lot of time, you're good. Yeah. If you don't have much time, but you have a lot of money, you're good. But if you fall out of either one of those, you're you not problems. <laughs> right, exactly. All right, next one. Replace government welfare with private charity. Uh, yeah, I, I just I don't believe that. That's, and again, this 
you need to drill down a lot more to answer this proficiently. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, That's why I was there like, are a lot of changes that need to be made in the welfare system as it is today. S- that's why, for I, me, some of these were maybe. But, okay, I get it. I get yeah, it. Some of them were maybe, and I, I definitely said, yes, it needs to be changed more than it needs to stay the same. Okay. All right, last question, and then when we come, we'll take a break, and we'll come back with the results. How's that sound? Okay. All right, uh, cut taxes and government spending by 50% or more. Oh, yeah. I don't 100%. think there's a heck yes. <laughs> yeah. If, if there, yeah, if I could just click yes a million times on that, I would click it. <laughs> and that, uh, you know, that, so that... It, being in the military and having been in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Africa, and all these other places, there was that report that just came out where a billion dollars went missing that was supposed to go to Afghanistan. A lot of people would just say, okay, well, then that, let's just reduce, reduce the money to the military. As a lean management process improvement Six Sigma guy, I, I understand and I see the inherent waste and inefficiencies in the government, in the military spending process. Right. Oh, yeah. There's no question. And it becomes this big political issue whenever says, somebody says we need to cut the defense budget. Well, no. You do. We could. We could tr- probably cut the defense budget in half and still have the efficiencies that we have if we went through and improved the processes of government spending. Exactly. That's well. That's not going to happen. I'll tell you what. It, why don't we, gonna happen, yeah. Why don't we do this? We'll submit these results into the computer, and uh, when we come back from break, we'll give them to everybody. How's that sound? Sounds good. That's like a tease. It's like a full-on <laughs> radio tease, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, you're listening to Gazette Radio with Doug and John, just John, and our special guest, Robert Patrick Lewis, on AM 1220 KHS Santa Clara's hometown station. We'll be right back. All right, we are back, Santa Clara. You're listening to Gazette Radio with Doug and John. Less Doug, more John. Yeah, it's actually not a bad thing, is it? All right, we got our special guest, our, our national correspondent and master of the universe, um, uh, Robert Patrick Lewis. Well, world renowned author yet? Can I throw that in there? Working on it. Yeah, I know. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah I'll throw it in there. All right, so uh, before the break, we had you take the world's smallest political quiz. And uh, after the break, we put in the results. And I wanted to read them to you because I think it's pretty funny. Um, let's see. You want government to have a great deal of power over the economy and individual behavior. Uh, you doubt whether economic and liberty or economic liberty and individual freedom are practical options in today's world. And you have a, a distrust for free markets, support high taxes, and central... Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the other one. <laughs> Let me turn yeah, that yeah, around. You're on the other side of yeah, the system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, might, you might be a libertarian, I'm guessing. A little bit. Well, you know, it's funny because I, I grew up in Texas, uh, in the military, come from a, a long line of military guys, own several of my own businesses. So I'm... Typically, you know, 20 years ago, I would have been the, the, the perfect demographic for the Republican Party. And I was. I mean, I was, I was raised a flag-waving, flag card-carrying member of the Republican Party. But a lot of the new, you know, there's that term rhino, Republican in name only. A right. lot of the new Republican Party has gone away from those Republican values. And now, and it's funny because it changes. The Democratic Party is now seen as the party of the minorities. They're actually the party that introduced the Jim Crow laws, right? So they... The, the tides of what a political party actually represents have changed significantly over time. And I feel the, the Libertarian Party actually represents more of what the Republican Party used to represent. Most of my friends from Special Forces, they're all Libertarians over Republicans. And we used to be, I mean, prime time, just, just block vote and Republican every chance we got. And then the last couple of elections, we've seen them typically go further and further away from what we saw as the Republican message. And now all of us have gone libertarian. Yeah, but have you, I mean, are you really concerned about? I don't. I, I don't know about you, but I don't like the terms. You know, the whole Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, libertarian, whatever. It, to me, it depends on the issue. You tell me what the issue is. I have my own set of values. I'll take a look at those values and make my determination. And this is one of the things I was going to talk to you about when it comes to to figuring out this early on. And it is early, um, but who to vote for for president? Sorting through. The candidates, do you look at, you know, do you make your list of important issues? I, this is what I think should happen. You should have a list of your important issues, and you should be able to research online what these people say about those issues and assign values to it somehow. I don't think people do that anymore. They don't, and, you know, there becomes a big problem. You know, I, my ex-wife is an actress, right? So I know a lot about the, the PR world and, and publicists and, and image people that are around an actress or an actor or a comedian or any of these famous people within their life. But we've come to a point in our society where politicians spend more on image people and PR people and messaging people and speech writers than any celebrity ever has in existence. And it's scary because it used to be you had debates, 
So a politician would get up there, and they would have a debate, and they would talk about how they feel about a certain issue, and you would make your judgments based on that. But they no longer follow those. They have image people and PR people telling them and sending them notes and saying, you need to see it, say this to appeal to this demographic. Right. You need to change your message to this to appeal to this demographic. So they essentially get up there, lie their pants off, they get more votes, they get voted in, and then they go to who they really are. But none of these people voting actually right. knew who they really were. You're absolutely right. You've, you, have, you have cleared out one of the mysteries of politics for me. Hillary went into the Chipotle and appealed to a certain demographic, people who wanted their lunch. <laughs> Right? How many times have you That's gone to Chipotle and gone? Marketing demographic. Yeah, you've gone to Chipotle and you've gone. Oh my God, this line is ridiculously long. I'll never get my burrito. And if she were there, it would have taken even longer. Well, she and did- that's, you know, so when you're talking about imaging, you're talking about PR. I love House of Cards. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. But anytime you see a politician in a picture moment, and Obama, a big thing, Obama's got a lot of flack for this because they only allow the press corps. Actually, they don't even allow the press to take pictures. They basically release their own pictures to the press. Yeah. So up to this point, it was the thing where you had all these journalists following a president.